Hey folks, welcome back to the Coswell Collectibles YouTube channel. I am Greg Brown, president of Coswell Collectibles. Um, a few months ago, we tried uh, to do a video on vintage G.I. Joe bodies and the variants thereof, uh, but we discovered that we had quite a few variants to discuss and we didn't have all the figures we needed. So we ended up capping off that and we decided we're just gonna start fresh off the top. So we brought in Ace Allgood, who has been here before, and Ace is uh, going to start the series off with talking about Caucasian bodies from G.I. Joe, and then the ongoing series will continue with doing African American bodies, European bodies, South America bodies, Mexico, you name it. Well, I think we're gonna cover them all. And if we don't, we will make sure that we do an addendum to add to those. So without further ado, I'm gonna let Ace take the wheel and uh, start talking about the 1960s through 70s G.I. Joe bodies. Okay, we are starting with American G.I. Joe. The first one, this is uh, daddy of them all. And I apologize for being a little bit hoarse. I was at a football game on Saturday and it was a great victory for my team. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, <laughs> these are figures from the United States. And um, the first one, which we all are most familiar with is our 1964 trademark figure and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show up close-ups of, of each of their butts and um, that's <laughs> kind of the funny thing we have to talk about G.I. Joe bottoms because that's where they are marked typically at least the early ones are marked on their their buttocks and if you do find a G.I. Joe that's not marked we can kind of talk a little bit about that as we go along because those may be an action man figure or they may be an early prototype figure but anyway these are American figures and we really have our first guy and he's a 64 and he was made until I the first markings I I believe were 64 65 and and then there was a transition figure that was made in the meantime. So the first figures have trademark with patent pending on their bottoms. And you can see this in the picture that we're showing you right now. The second issue, which looks very identical to the, uh, the, the, the trademark version, has got a registered trademark after the original G.I. Joe and is still a patent pending figure. Now, these figures were all made with four hair colors. They had black, they had brown, they had yellow, and they had red. And they were randomly inserted into boxes. Um, I believe since the Adventure Team figures were more colored, coordinated towards certain services, uh, a lot of people think that those early 64 five figures were that way. But no, they were generally just randomly thrown in there. Okay. Um, I think we'll all know, we'll mention this several times, at the, at the end of the day, they were trying to sell figures and they were trying to get out as many as they possibly could. Now, there are subtle differences in these early figures. There are painted rivets, unpainted rivets, there are beefy hands, there are baby feet, there are slotted shoulders. We're not covering all that now, we're just covering the basics of the basic figure. Because there are a lot of like really weird quirky things that came out in the early figures, but I think it's just best to give us an overall view at this point. Yeah. So your trademark figures are your basic early G.I. Joe. Um, and again, we'll do another video later on early figures, okay. I think. We'll be, we'll would be fun. Um, but anyway, so the figures are all generally basically the same as you can kind of see through and you'll see this through the international line as well. But anyway, the 60, um, the next figure bottom is the patent number body. Okay. okay. And this came out in now again, there's a lot of kind of mystery about these figures. What exact date they came out? What days did they show up? I call this a 64, 65 figure. I call this a 65, 66 figure. And I'm saying from 66 on, they were probably had the patent number on that. Right. Um, and then so that basic figure takes us through the adventure team line. Now this guy right here is a 69 figure. And what's interesting is you can 
can kind of tell what's interesting is they've gotten the plastic kind of figured out. And when we talk about early figures, we'll talk about head sculpts, we'll talk about gummy heads, and we'll talk about shrunken heads. And, and they were figuring out what the plastics were to make these heads work. And they were messing around with stuff. But by 1969, they had figured out how to get the head where it would be molded and not shrink over a brief period of time. These guys' heads are hard. This guy's head is soft. If you'll notice too, this guy's head is soft. This guy is essentially a flocked head of this kind. It may or may not be painted. Some of the early fuzz heads were painted underneath because they were trying to add the new fuzz head to it. But they're essentially the same plasticizers. I think they figured out, they figured out what the plastic formula was right, by right. this time. Now, an interesting thing about 69 figures is you can find most 69 figures have painted rivets. You'll notice that this figure does not have painted rivets. This is a 69 fight for survival that came with the dog sled uh, figure. And um, some of those figures, I've seen them sealed in a bag that came with that set will have unpainted rivets, really? but a 69 head. But generally speaking, you will find most of your 69 figures have painted, painted rivets. rivets. Because what was going on now, again, I can tell you that I know that these these figures, these 69 Fight for Survival was in the 1970 catalog. You know what I mean? So they were still making them and they were still pumping them out, but they came with painted head figures. All right. You know, so, um, and when they stopped doing that, um, they were, this is probably a later issue of that that had some of the, some of the unpainted rivets. Because what we know is, is some of the early fuzz headed figures, which is like this guy right here, the early fuzz head figures did come sometimes with painted head, sometimes with unpainted rivets, and sometimes a mix match. Because what they were trying to do is they were just trying to get out product and try to use the old stuff and try to get the new stuff out there as well. Right, right. Now, you'll notice that we still are using our hard hand nose picker, the this and this hands that we've been using all the way from 1964 up until 1974. Okay. So the first 10 years of the figures were basically the nose pickers. So the first two, th first three years of Adventure Team were the nose picker hands. And then in 1974, they released the same body style, but that had the Kung Fu grip things. Now, I also want to talk about your head sculpts here and your hair colors. We had the the black hair was the basic land adventurer. The black hair with the beard. The black hair with the non-beard was the man of action. Oh, the brunette. The brunette, yeah. The black hair, brown hair. That's a, yeah, brunette, brunette hair. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the brunette hair. And then we have the, the, the yellow hair is the air adventurer. The yellow hair guy with no beard is the astronaut. Mm -hmm. The red-headed bearded guy was the sea adventurer, mm -hmm. okay? And there was no red-headed guy that did not have a beard that was released in the, the United States. Right. Okay? So that guy took us from like 1974 until really 1975, they introduced the muscle, muscle body bodies. figure. Now, I believe it was in 1975 also that they came out with the Atomic Man. And the Atomic Man is... How do we kind of, it's just like a different storyline that they came up with to try to, um, from my understanding, they originally pitched to do the $6 million man. They didn't get the $6 million man. So they had this whole atomic figure that they had figured out or bionic figure that they had figured out and they changed the name to protect the innocent as they used to say. And didn't they call the series a super adventure team? That didn't they release it underneath that name? They did. They had the Super Adventure Team, which then had the Bullet Man, the Bullet involved, Man. involved with that. Right. And I did. I don't have Bullet Man here, but that's a little bit of a, um, a slightly different figure. Just a muscle body with uh, silver arms, nose picker hands, nose picker hands, which is kind of interesting, and a different head sculpt, which is more along the high head sculpt of the Defender. The defender. Now, you'll notice that Atomic Man has a completely different head sculpt. 
And uh, Daryl DePriest gives an amazing lecture, if you ever get a chance to hear it, where he talks about how the Atomic Man is a is the love child of the Six Million Dollar Man and Big Jim, Big which, Jim, which are two alternate products, but at the same time, too, it ends up with our favorite friend, the Atomic Man. Now, it's also my understanding the Atomic Man actually sold better than Six Million Dollar Man. So, well, there's a little solace in that. Right. Well, the scale was better, too, because the Six Million Dollar Man was almost like, what, 13 inches tall compared? Yeah, he was just a little bit bigger. bigger. Than Joe. Yeah, from Kenner. Right. And one thing you'll notice about this atomic man is that he's got miscolored arms here and some people get all excited about a yellow arm or a yellow leg <laughs> and i just have this guy put together here because this is the way i have him and i think this is a nice example that shows it depends on the plastic much like the shrieking heads of the early guys we've got plastic that was used on this clear and it turned yellow over time, over time. and i you know i think sun has something to do with it um you know but then again you look at this one and it's weirdly aged how that is one thing i think is kind of interesting about adventure team guys that no a lot of people will talk about is their rubber of their hands tend to be pretty good and those tend to last a little bit better than, than the, the, the early yeah. Joe guys and so it's sometimes not a bad thing if you got a beater mike powers and he's got good hands to, to put him towards another another joe and the other thing that was uh, needed to be noted it was like on on the feet especially the the, the connector joints are not the clear they're actually the silver to go along with the silver joint there and I, I, I don't know if the hands are not i think the hands were uh, were just regular what's ironic is is the right hand has the silver, has and, the silver. The, and the left hand has the clear the yeah. clear wrist the wrist peg is wrist that what you call yeah. it yeah. but very excellent point greg is that that it's if you ever see an atomic man with a white clear thing you know the foot's been replaced right and i'll also tell you those feet aren't the most stable they they do those those gray ones seem to break a little easier than the clear ones for some reason All right so that pretty much ends that original body style and that kind of takes us to the 1975 um, muscle body and again you can see on these muscle body guys i've got a i've got a um, talking guy here and what's interesting is if you look at his back He's got a um, he's got a, a speaker for him, and then he's got what's really kind of funny is is he's got a talker chain to pull, but they didn't give him the short talker chain; they gave him the long talker chain, and I don't really know why they did that. The other thing that's really really interesting about this, he has a different saying, and I think that's really fascinating. So. Um, the one thing I didn't talk about in this grouping is, is that there is a non-muscle body talker figure, and I will send a photograph of that, <laughs> which I did not bring. But that came in hard hands as well as Kung Fu grip. But if you see this, the talking figure from the early series, he's more based on the entire, the old muscle, the old figure style, except that they've made different joints for his, for his shoulders right. and for his head, which go in there but the but the the lower body is virtually identical i mean it is identical so and the torso the torso for these was a blow mold whereas the torso for the talker was a two-piece that put screws in there and held it in place and so it was a, it was a, and it kind of had a shinier sheen kind of like that because absolutely and two screws in the back two so screws in the back yeah two two regular screws in the back but again the um the muscle body guy this muscle body um, has a completely different um, uh, voiceover in it and uh, completely different sayings. And my friend Scott Wilde, who's, who's the great fixer of these, says you can also sometimes find these early muscle body guys with the old talker box in them. Hmm. Not every muscle body talker has the newer system. So they're just so using up old inventory. They, again, it goes back to using up old inventory. Right. Now, you can't... Um, you can't find it. And that would be the adventure team talking figure. We had the, the, the four services, the pilot, the, the sailor, the marine, and the soldier talking figure. And then we also had the man that was really always interesting to me, the fuzzhead man of action that even made it from 70 to 75 
was the original talking talking stage. talking soldier, soldier. talking yeah. soldier. Yeah. So that's just fascinating that they kept they kept putting that talking box in there. And I don't know if that's because that was just a concept that they wanted to do, or they had a lot over at the beginning. But they always put the talking soldier into the talking man of action. Hmm. One more thing about these. Um, it's good to stand up. <laughs> One more thing about these muscle body figures on, on these these other figures that they, they were all marked on their bottoms and um, they have the great right cheek markings on them. The muscle body figures do not have that. They actually have markings on their lower back mm -hmm. and they also have AT in their built in molded skinnies. So they're no longer completely new. They're a little, um, they're less, they're better to hang out with the kids. They got their speedos. They got their speedos on. And if you notice, there's a tiny little AT in the middle of the buckle of the speedos. And the markings for the GI Joe is on the, um, the lower back. Another point I would really like to make about the United States muscle body figures is they have notches on the bottom of the feet. These are the only figures that have the notches oh, yeah. on the bottom of the feet. And I don't know if they're going to put wheels in there or what, but for some reason they have notches and um, the European figures do not. Huh. So that's just kind of interesting. I think that wraps us up. I do want to say again, we don't know everything about figures. We are learning all the time ourselves. So if there's something that you want to share with us that we missed here, please share them in the comments. We'll talk about them and um, we'll go from there. And I, you know, I think this gives a general overview of all the figures that are in the, um, the American vintage G.I. Joe line. All right, folks, make sure that you check in with us next week. We're going to be talking about the um, the adventure team, excuse me, the, uh, the G.I. Joe line, but we're going to be looking at it from the African-American figure perspective for the G.I. Joe line. Uh, also, make sure that you uh, like and subscribe to our page and uh, spread the word about uh, the videos. People have been very much uh, been enjoying these videos. So make sure you get the word out. So see you next week.